Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model gravity loads in the RAM Structural System RAM Modeler. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to model some gravity loads, which will include defining the member load in the self-weight criteria, modeling superimposed gravity surface loads, modeling gravity line and point loads, and also how to model snow loads in the RAM Modeler. In this video, you will learn how to model superimposed gravity loads in the RAM modeler. All gravity loads imposed on a structure, with the exception of the self-weight, must be applied to the model as a surface loading, line loading, or point loading. Before loads can be assigned to the model, they must first be defined in the property table for each load type. When the loads are laid out, they will be distributed to the supporting framing based on the tributary area and deck orientation of the slab or deck assigned to that level. Each of the superimposed loads that we will apply to the model consists of several gravity load types. The first load type we will define is our dead load, which will include any superimposed dead load on the structure, since we've already told the program to automatically calculate the self-weight. We can also enter the construction dead load, which will be used for pre-composite checks of steel member, and the value of this field must be less than or equal to the dead load you enter. You can also enter your live load, and here you should use your code suggested live loads based on the occupancy of your structure. You can also enter partition loads, and here you should also use your code suggested partition loads if applicable. The partition loads will be applied to the model as live load, but they will not be considered in the live load reduction calculations. You can also enter construction live loads, which will be used for pre-composite checks of steel members, and also this value must be less than or equal to the live load you enter. Finally, you'll also define your mass dead load, and this will be used to calculate your seismic loads in RAM frame. Typically, this would be the dead load of the structure, superimposed dead load, plus a percentage of the live load if required by your local building code. In this exercise, we will learn how to populate the point load property table and then model point loads on our structure. To begin, we will go over to our layout toolbar and click on our layout loads icon. When this icon has been selected, all of the tools to lay out loads and access the property tables will become available. To access the point loads property table, I will select the third icon from the left for point loads. In the point load property table, I can enter all the appropriate information for my load. And for this example, I will assume that a chiller is being placed on my roof structure. I'm going to assume each support location is five kips of dead load and also five kips of mass dead load. Once I've entered all the information for this particular point load, I will go ahead and click add to officially add it to the property table. Now I can add as many properties for point loads that are needed for my particular model. Once you have completed entering your point load property table, we'll go ahead and click OK and now we'll see that our layout point loads icon has now become available. For this exercise we will be modeling our point loads on a roof layout which as you can see is already selected in our layout pull down menu. Next we will go over to our layout loads toolbar and click on the layout point loads icon. From this area we'll be able to select any point load that was created in our property table and we'll highlight our chiller point load. Now we can add this on any grid location or we can add it on a beam. Now if this point load is located directly on top of a column, beam, or wall, the load will be transmitted directly to that structure below. If it is located somewhere within the slab and not directly on top of a beam, wall, or column, then the orientation and type of deck will distribute that load to the supporting framing based on the tributary area. I'm going to go ahead and select the on grid option and then I will click add and then I'm going to add my chiller load at grid intersection 
e.5, 2, at f2, at f3, at f4, at e.54, and e.53. Once you are finished modeling all of your point loads, you can go ahead and save your model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.